Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge, and I'm bringing Hades to you today. It's certainly very far from the current uh, religious view of what Hades is. This is just a pocket knife. What we've got is a sort of modified clip point buoy style blade. Uh, you'll get to see it up close when we get to the tabletop. Uh, G10 handle scales, 154 cm steel, comes I think six different ways, five or six different ways, five or six different price points. Starts at 80 US dollars and it goes on to 130 US dollars if you buy it directly from Damn Designs, but it's also at White Mountain Knives. It looks like White Mountain Knives only has this version, the same one I have, 80 bucks, but you save 10% with coupon code CCE. Unfortunately, it's out of stock at White Mountain Knives right now. You can go to their webpage for this knife and there's a notify me button, an orange button. You put in your email address and you can get notified when it's back in stock. Or if you just can't wait, you can get it directly from Damn Designs. So I'm going to show you everything you want to know about this knife. We're going to do a teardown to show you the insides. And I'm going to talk about all the measurements that I've done myself. Don't just assume that the measurements that the vendor gives or that the manufacturer gives are accurate. I do all my own measurements from scratch. I think you're worth it. I'm a knife nut and I want to share my enthusiasm for knives with you. Stick around. So here you go. Let's take a look at this thing. Do a size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. Line up those pivot pins. It's a bit smaller, not an awful lot smaller and it's bigger in some ways. So I'm calling this a full-size folder. You know, it's just barely a full-size folder. You know, my hands are into the extra large range and there's spare room back here for, you know, larger hands if I wanted to have larger hands on here, or if you have larger hands, you know, for you. What we got is a 154 cm blade. They were originally going to make it from 14C28N but the manufacturer couldn't get that, and so they upgraded it to 154 cm, which, hey, I'm happy about. The price range, I think it's worth it for 154 cm. The edges are chamfered. We've got a flat section up here with a big hole milled out of it. And then we've got a radius here, like a recurve, a negative radius here for the clip point. So it's not just a straight clip point, it comes down and out. And that's got a very thin tip to it. Pretty delicate. Not extremely delicate, but pretty delicate. You're going to want to be careful with that. You know, if you don't want a delicate tip, get a different knife. But if you like these really thin tips, this guy's got that. We've got a flat grind that comes close to the spine. Call that a saber grind. So that's really nice. And we've got a belly here. The whole thing is belly. I like that a lot. It's not good for chopping vegetables or anything on a table because it only has one small point of contact, but it's a great slicer, cutter, and it's a decent piercer as well because of that tip the way it is. We've got some jimping on the spine there. I wish it came out a little bit further, but mostly that's pretty good. If there was a forward choil, you know, I'd want the jimping to go further, but uh, nope, there isn't. The flipper, it's got jimping on the front and across the top. It's pretty nice, easy to do, light switch method, no problem or just push down on a bit of an angle. That works really well. The detent is quite good. It holds the blade in when you want it in. Now, uh, it's not a super strong detent, but it's quite good. I'm happy with it. Easy enough to, you know, load it up and then deploy that blade. Oh, by the way, I didn't talk about the sharpener's choil. It's a fairly small sharpener's choil. I wish it was a little bit bigger. It does come out past the plunge, so you can sharpen it to the end without getting into the plunge. I just wish it was a tiny bit bigger. Not much, but just a little bit. And I like that the plunge is quite quick. It doesn't take a long time to go from the full thickness of the ricasso to the full thinness of the bevel. So that's good. Badging, I didn't mention that before. 154 cm right there. And their damn designed logo right there. I do wish that was etched up here on the flats instead. I don't like stuff on the bevels unless it's a full flat grind, then you have to do it on bevels. If you've got a flat section, then I like it to be on that flat section. The handle here, this uh, hexagonal design here with those lines milled in it, that is a damn design, not a logo, but it's it's a motif of their design. 
all their knives have that in different sizes depending on the size of the knife. And on the other side, you've got a nice T8 screw. It's also got the gray wash that the blade has. I didn't mention that before. There's a number of different treatments for the blade if you buy it from Dam Designs. The lock release arm sticks out nicely, so it's easy to engage. It's got nice chipping across the top, so it's easy to engage. I do prefer a nice chamfer instead of the chipping on the top, but that's okay. Lock up right there is fully engaged and there's loads of room for it to wear over. No blade play, side to side, up and down. You know, the lockup is very good. I'll show you the ball bearings in just a few minutes. The handle, this is a flat slab G10 with a major chamfer on that edge and a pretty big chamfer here. So all the way around, it's chamfered. Very comfortable in hand when you're just holding it like this. No hot spots. We've got inset liners and they're skeletonized. That helps with the weight. But still, let me do it this way. There you go. The balance point is right there. I do wish that they would have done more skeletonizing and maybe brought the balance point right there. That would fix the balance point a bit better. I like the balance point close to the pivot pin and it would also save some weight. But we've got those nice inset liners. We've got a backspacer of G10. It goes right to the end all the way around to the top. And then we've got a milled out section for a lanyard up there. I like those kind of lanyard attachment points. I would prefer if it was at the end though, instead of at the top. Now, I don't know if they could put it at the end because of the way the blade is and everything, but when you take it apart, you'll see how much room there is in there. I think they could have put it on the end if they, you know, would have tried to put it there. Maybe they'd try, maybe they did try to put it there. I don't know. At least this is nice and small. So when your paracord's in there, it doesn't bunch up too much on your hand because when you're holding it, you know, the paracord's just coming out the back. So that's pretty good. What is this piece of steel here doing with that T8 screw? Well, that's because the pocket clip can go on either side. I like the way they put a spacer back here, much more high end than just a little steel spacer like uh, Ganzo does. But you know, the knife does cost a fair bit more. So it's good that they've done a nice high end spacer that looks good while still making it left and right friendly. I do like that an awful lot. And then the screws in here, I think those are also T8. I didn't double check that. Let me grab a T8 screw. Yes, T8 pocket clip screws. Excellent. And the tops of them are flush so that pocket doesn't catch on there. Easy to get access to them. And let's see what it's like going into a pocket. We've got a nice little scoop there. Climbs over and goes all the way in. And that gray wash, I like how that looks on the denim. The knife hides in your pocket really well. I'm very happy with that. Very happy indeed. That pocket clip, I quite like it. I like that it sticks out just a little bit from the knife. Very well done. One other thing just before we do the teardown, the blade alignment, I didn't show you that. It's almost right down the middle, ever so slightly closer to the show side, but they've got very tight tolerances there. There's not much room for it and it's in there without touching either side. It just fits in there just right. What do you think of it so far? Maybe pause the video and leave some comments down below. I'm going to take a couple of minutes and take it apart. I'm very happy with the hardware on this. We've got a nice pin here, the T8 screw. There's no thread locker on that screw. It is a free spinning body pin, but I didn't have to use an extra screwdriver, just pressure from the back side with one finger and then I screwed it out from the other side. So that's good. Uh, here's your back spacer you know, with the hole drilled into it. So your paracord goes down and through and up out the other side. A floating pin for alignment. So it goes right in, right in there. So that's quite nice. There's your skeletonizing. Yes, those could and I think should be bigger. You can add another small one back here and maybe add another one back here just to uh, make it a bit lighter. And a spacer for it for the other side. It's a very simply made spacer. Ceramic ball bearings, which are very nice with phosphor bronze cages, quite good. Now, this is a round pin, but it's not free spinning because of this head. The head fits into that G10. That stops it from spinning. So I like that it's fully round and uh, yet is a fixed pin. So that's just great. Good quality hardware and it fits together very well.
Time to put it back together, and we're going to go over all the dimensions. As I go about the measurements next, I did use some Gunny Glide on there, lubricant, and the action's even nicer now than it was before. It just flies out nice and smoothly. I like that stuff. I'll do a full video on it soon. Dimensions. The weight of this knife, 136 grams, 4.8 ounces. That's one of the reasons why I wish it was just a little bit lighter. It is a fairly big knife, you know, this way. It just has to add weight. 4.8 ounces, I don't mind. You know, 5 ounces for a pocket knife this size, I'm totally okay with it. But I know that there's some guys that are not okay with that weight. Sharpness from the factory, 190 bess. Just a little bit worse than average. The cutting edge length, 88.2 millimeters, which is 3.47 inches. Blade length tipped to the closest spot on the handle, 83.8 millimeters, 3.3 inches. The thickness of the blade, 3.96 millimeters, 0.156 of an inch, so well over an eighth of an inch, that's nice. The blade depth, that's this measurement, 33.4 millimeters, 1.32 inches. How thick is it behind the grind? Measured in three places. The average is 0.34 millimeters, 13 thousandths of an inch. That's a thin edge. Every time you sharpen it, of course, it goes thicker, so I'm glad they started nice and thin. It's one of the reasons why it's so darn slicey. The grind angles, this side's got an average of 20.8. This side's got an average of 23.3. Unfortunately, this is the worst sharpened side. Starts at 21 degrees even here and goes to 25.6 degrees there. That's 4.6 degrees of angle change along the length of that edge. This one starts at 20.2, ends at 21.4. That's 1.2 degrees of change. That's better than the industry average. 4.6 degrees, that's a little worse than the industry average. Unfortunately, the industry sucks for angle of sharpening the grind angle. It, they just do a terrible job of it. Every company does. It's just the way it goes. Okay, every company, you know, that makes knives under 100 bucks. You know, some of the companies that do really high-end stuff do better. But under 100 bucks US, you're going to find that kind of sharpening grind angle stuff everywhere. And it really, really sucks. On to the handle. The handle length, 116.9 millimeters, 4.6 inches. The grip area, it's a bit over 9.5 centimeters, a bit over 3 and 3 quarter inches. That's a full-size handle to me. The thickness of the handle on the G10 slabs, the widest point, 13.9 millimeters, 0.547. Not bad. I like it right around half an inch. The handle depth within the grip area, widest points here, 29.2 millimeters, 1.15 inches. When the knife is closed, the widest point is not here. It's right here. 36.7 millimeters, 1.45 inches. And the total length of this knife, rounded to the nearest millimeter, 201 millimeters, 7.91 inches. So what's my summary? What are my final thoughts on this knife? Do I like it? Yes, I like it. I like it quite a fair bit. It's a good knife. It's well-designed, well-engineered, uh, well-created. You know, the price is a little bit outside of what I usually review on this channel. Usually I'm sticking to 60 US dollars or less. It's closer to 72 if you get it at White Mountain Knives. So it's a little bit outside of what I normally do. So I'm sure there's going to be some people commenting about how expensive it is. That's just the nature of it. Unfortunately, it's also a knife that I don't know of any stores in Canada that have it. I really wish they did, but I don't know of any. So there's that. I had mine sent to a friend in Nebraska and have it sent up to me. That's how I got it here. I think I'm probably going to keep this guy. I'm quite happy with it. Yeah, it's got some very minor flaws, like the alignment's not perfect, but it's a very good alignment. And just the way this thing cuts. Once I sharpen this thing, probably to... Well, while it's so terribly thin, I might do it at 20 degrees per side. You know, after it's sharpened a few times and gets a little bit thicker, probably 18 degrees per side. And uh, then it'll be a little more heavy-duty EDC. You know, right now, it's... A great slicing machine. It's not a long blade, but it's pretty good. Now, what I would like to see is a version of this thing with a forward choil. You know, that takes away a little bit of your cutting edge, but then you've got a knife where you can get behind it and start doing hard stuff, and that'd be just great. I'm happy with it. Let me summarize the pros and cons. Uh, first, the pros. 
I like this pocket clip and the spacer there, really nice. I like that there's T8 hardware, very nice. Uh, the general design, I'm happy with it. The grip, it's quite comfortable. Uh, the deployment options, you know, opening it through the hole instead of the flipper. I didn't show it that much, did I? You know, that works just fine, or the flipper. It's nice. The things that are just okay. Well, where the lanyard hole, that is, you know, for me, it's good because I don't use lanyards most of the time, but I think it'd be better on the end. Um, the alignment, fairly good, but not perfect. This tip, that's the third thing. It's quite a bit thin there, so it's a little bit risky if you're going to be going into hard stuff, puncturing. Cons. I want more skeletonizing in there. I really do. I want that balance point to be a little bit further towards this pivot pin. It fixes the balance point to be better, and it makes the whole thing a little bit lighter. So that's what I think of this thing. Tell me what you think. Do you have one? Are you going to get one? Which one are you going to get? Leave a comment down below. I really appreciate the comments. It really does help the algorithm for the video to get promoted as well. Thank you to my supporters financially. You know, the guys on Patreon and uh, all the guys and gals on Patreon and the guys and gals on YouTube memberships. It just takes a couple bucks a month and you can help me out an awful lot. I appreciate the help. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.